Hi, my name is Charles Bertelsmeyer. Um, I've been coming to this church for almost 37 years. Uh, as far as how long I've been a Christian, uh, when I was a child, from as far back as I can remember, we used to have morning devotions after breakfast, evening devotions after dinner. We'd have our prayers before we went to bed, and the evening devotions consisted of systematically reading through Bible history from creation all the way to the ascension, and we'd cycle through that every year. I'd like to share something that happened to me um, 30 years ago, but it does need <coughs> some background. Um, I was married when I was 22, had a daughter when I, <coughs> excuse me, when I was 30, and that marriage broke up when I was 34. Um, what I didn't understand about my wife was that she suffered from paranoid schizophrenia, and she had this conviction that all men were unfaithful and she just could not believe that I could be faithful to her. So life was a continual attempt to not give her any reason to believe I was unfaithful. But it got so bad and I just wasn't coping anymore. So I walked out of the marriage. I guess the story that I wanted to share with you now was um, my daughter used to spend every second weekend with me and she'd come to church with me and um, she'd go to Sunday school as we had in those days and one Sunday after she finished Sunday school she was very upset and I wanted to know why and she explained that her teacher had given them a test and uh, one of the questions uh, she was failed on and she was very upset about that. So I asked her what the question was and she said, um, if I'm a good person, will I go to heaven? And of course she said, yes. And the teacher says, no. Um, being a good person is not going to get you to heaven. Now I thought that was a pretty rude thing to do to a 10 year old. So next time I saw him, I gave him heaps. I really let go at him. And um, so he turned around and had a go at me and he gave me this great sermon on salvation by grace that it's got nothing to do with what we do. And um, while he was speaking to me, the Holy Spirit was working in the background. And... Um, what the Holy Spirit was saying to me is that all this guilt, all this sense of failure, it's just been, sorry, yeah, all this sense of failure and guilt has just been taken away. So much of what was happening was just outside of my control. I really felt that Jesus was in charge and through the Holy Spirit was guiding me and leading me and uh, just doing things that I never expected and yeah, it was just so much. I almost felt like a, um, a witness, outside witness <laughs> watching my story just unfold because of what the way God was, was working in my life. God doesn't wait for us. He acts and does things in his timing. Um, I mean, the Christianity I grew up in was um, a ritualistic Christianity. You go along to confirmation and the pastor says, I will ask you a question and I'll teach you the answer to give me. And that's confirmation. It's the whole training we get. It's not about relationships. It's, it's got nothing to do with having a relationship with God. It's having the right knowledge about God. And that's what a good Lutheran is. I'm sorry. <laughs> but, but that's the way Lutheranism in Australia had become. It was all about having the right knowledge. And you get married at 22. You've been a good Christian boy all your life. And you get married, and then it all falls apart, and you say, God, what on earth is going on? I thought that because I was a Christian, you'd look after me. You didn't. 
well, he obviously was, but not in the way I could see. Um, and it wasn't until I gave up and stopped trying to solve it myself, admitted my utter failure or inability to do anything, that uh, God stepped in. Okay, a scripture I'd like to share is John 13, 34. And I'm reading from the New Living Translation. And Jesus is talking to his disciples and he says, So now I'm giving you a new commandment. Love each other. Just as I have loved you, you should love each other. And I guess what is really powerful for me is Jesus' love was sacrificial. And that's the way he's challenging us to love one another. One thing I'd like people to remember from my story is that God's in control. God's working in my life. He's working there all the time. And he's just so committed to me. And, and I know I deserve absolutely nothing. None of it is just a wonderful, loving God. My name is Charles, and this is his story, my life. Thank you.